Okay, so one of the most important patterns that you'll see across the internet is loading data in batches or as most of us web devs call it, pages. Pagination is key when you want to increase performance by not loading everything at the same time on the front end but also querying less amount of data from the database on the back end. This is a core pattern in web development and React query makes it extremely easy to handle pagination. So let's get into it. Before adding things into the project, let me first get rid of a few things. You don't need the user's query anymore, so I'll just remove this and I'll just get rid of the function as well. I'll also remove this use queries hook and uncomment our original query. Now at the bottom of this page, I'll add two buttons that will handle the pagination for us. Both these buttons will have an on click event handler, which will move the page up or down by one count but first we need the page state so i'll use use state and set the default page to one now inside the button i'll add the click event handler so i have this event handler for the previous page button and the next page button the next page button is pretty straightforward anytime i click on it it's going to increase the page count by one the previous page button has a check so if the page count is set to zero that means there are no more pages left to go back to then it's not going to do anything if it's more than zero that means if it's one or above then it's going to do what it's supposed to do which is decrease the page count by one i also have this text here that displays the current page that we are on so yeah let's go to the browser and see how this works at the bottom you should see the two buttons yeah, let me just change the color of this text and yeah, you can see the page, the current page is set to one. If I click on the next button, it's going to increase the page count by one. And if I click on the previous button, it's going to decrease the page count. And when I'm on the first page, it's not going to decrease the count any further. Now the API that we are using has an option to pass in a page query parameter. So we'll be accepting the page from the function parameter and dynamically switch between pages. So let me just add the page as a parameter. And at the very end, I'll pass in the page and set it to the value that we are getting from a parameter. Let me convert this into a template string and I'll save this. Now all this setup had nothing to do with React Query. The only thing we need to do in React Query is to pass the page to the query key. That's literally it. So inside this query key, I'll just pass in the page and I'll save this. I also need to pass in the page inside this query function. Now, if I go back to the browser, let me reload this. Now you'll see that the post API has a query parameter as well, which is the page. And it's only going to fetch the first 10 results for this page. If I go to the very bottom and click on any one of these buttons. Let me click on the next button. It's going to fetch the results from the second page. But the thing that's unpleasant here is this loading state that we get any time we click on a new page and get some new data. That's because each page is essentially a new query. So it will also have its own loading state. This problem again has a very simple solution provided by react query. We have an option called placeholder data. So using this, we get access to the data from the last successful fetch. And at the same time, the new data is also being requested in the background. There's a function called keep previous data that's provided by react query. I can directly get it from here and I'll pass this function to the placeholder data. Let me save this. And now if I go back to the browser, I am currently on page two. So if I click on the next page, it is fetching the page three results, but you see that this time it's not switching to the loading state. It loads the data in the background and once it is fetched, it simply swaps it with the older data. Now this again can be improved with the help of a visual indicator. I somehow want to know when the data is being fetched and I cannot use is pending in this case because it's already being used here. Instead, what we'll use this is fetching. This flag will keep me updated anytime there's a fetch operation happening for a query. That actually is the main difference between is pending and is fetching. Anytime the cache is empty, 
and it gets loaded with data, the pending state will change. But when the cache is full and then there's a fetch call for whatever reason, the fetching state will change. So the fetching state will pretty much always give you accurate information of data being fetched at the beginning and also for any subsequent request. So we have extracted is fetching from this query. I'll wrap our list in a div and conditionally provide a tailing class whenever is fetching is set to true. So this whole list that we have here, I'll wrap it inside a div. If the data is fetching, I will set a background of gray 300 and I'll also decrease the opacity to half or else just keep it as it is. Let me save this and go back to the browser. Now you'll notice that if we move to a new page, there is a visual indicator even though it's pretty ugly. Disgusting. But at least there's an indicator telling you that data is being fetched. And once the data is fetched, this indicator goes away. So this was an example of how to achieve pagination using React query. Now one more form of pagination is infinite scrolling. You see it on a lot of social media apps or any app that has a huge list. It's a much better experience on mobile since you're always in a scrolling state. You don't have to press anything. So yeah, it's a very common and very user intuitive experience. React query has a solution for it as well. So that's what we'll be seeing in the next video. It may not be as straightforward as this example, but it's still a lot easier than a manual implementation. So yeah, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.